everyone and welcome to Microcosmos. Today we're going to talk about fairings. Those big white hollow nose cones on rockets are deceptively complex, as they should be since they protect the spacecraft payload that is often one of a kind. The main objective of payload fairings are to protect the payload from dynamic pressures and atmospheric heating during launch. Once outside of Earth's atmosphere, they are jettisoned and fall back to Earth, where they either burn up in the atmosphere or crash into an ocean. They are made to be as lightweight as possible, and as such are made from honeycomb aluminum structures underneath a composite or often graphite epoxy shell. This is the same material that's used on the outer shell of most solid rocket boosters. They clamp together in two halves and are mounted to the top of a rocket usually to the upper or vacuum stage. Depending on the size and composition, they have a mass between 1.5 to around 4 tons. On the interior of the fairings, you might notice dozens of panels mounted inside. These acoustic panels actually absorb some of the sound and vibration during launch, which helps to protect the spacecraft inside. Hardware included with the fairings are usually radio frequency windows, access doors, and the acoustic panels. And optional features like thermal shields, environmental control systems, and doors can also be added. The fairings are attached to the payload adapter, where the payload is also mounted. If the payload was mounted to the insides of the fairings, vibrations and stresses may damage the payload, which is why they are both separately mounted to the same adapter. Once the payload, fairings, and adapter have all been mated together, the entire assembly is mounted to the upper stage of the rocket and the fairings are not separated again until after launch. Each family of rockets has its own fairing family, from which multiple options are available. It's customary for the mission's organization, name, mission pattern, design and manufacturer of the rocket to be painted onto the fairing. United Launch Alliance contracts this to be done by hand, an impressive career choice for the artist. Separation occurs at a chosen altitude, when pyrotechnics either clip cables or shoot out bolts that keep the fairings together. The payload fairing can also enclose the upper stage of the rocket, such as with the Atlas V. Sometimes though, the fairing doesn't jettison correctly, which can cripple the mission or cause a complete failure. The Gemini 9A mission was to test docking in space, but the augmented target the target docking adapter launched prior to the manned capsule was discovered to have its fairings still attached and not separated. This was caused by two lanyards which should have been removed before flight. The docking mission was made impossible and the error fell onto the shoulders of the launch crew. In 2009, NASA's Orbiting Carbon Observatory was launched on the Taurus XL by Orbital Sciences. The fairing failed to separate, causing the spacecraft to retain too much mass and fail orbital insertion, crashing in the ocean near Antarctica. In 2011, NASA NASA's Glory satellite also failed to reach orbit after a fairing separation failure on the same launch vehicle by Orbital Sciences, making it the second consecutive failure of the vehicle, urging NASA to drop future contracts for the Taurus XL in favor of the Delta II rocket. SpaceX, as with all other components of its rockets, builds their fairings in-house. Well, I hope you liked this week's episode of Microcosmos. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with future videos. Have a good week, everyone.